Hello friends, so in this video we are going to have a discussion on what is a diamond process and uh, why we are using it. So the diamond process is a long running service that runs in the background of a uh, you know Linux system and uh, they don't have any you know TTY that means that uh, the user cannot access that process from the terminal, right? So diamond process is used where we need to have the recursive task like uh, we need to you know scan for some port or uh, we need to uh, get some uh, data from the port so we need to continuously check for that port uh, whether the data is available or not so for that purpose uh, we need a diamond process so the diamond process starts or uh, when the system boots up and uh, closes when the system shut down so uh, they can be started from the init scripts so when the system boots uh, the init scripts come into picture and uh, it will start this diamond process and when we shut down our system it will again initiate the init scripts to shut down the service so the lifetime of this diamond process is uh, you know the main uh, runtime of the system okay so there can be you know the configuration files also related to this diamond which we can save it in a uh, you know the slash etc directory of the linux uh, system okay so when the diamond starts it will take the configuration from that file and uh, you know do the operation regarding that so if we uh, you know want to change this configuration at the runtime we can do it from the config files and then restart the service so as your dormant process don't have any you know uh, the tty or not the uh, you know the controlling terminal so the here the controlling terminal will be uh, the init scripts right so we can start restart or shut down or whatever operation we want to do on the stem and we can do it from there okay so if we want to check for uh, you know the logs or some errors that encountered during the processing of this diamond we can use it uh, you know through uh, the syslog so we can log it there and then we can uh, you know check for any error uh, on the diamond so there can be many diamond process that exists on the linux system so few of those are you know you have the HTTP uh, PD service and SSH for uh, you know uh, remote access of the uh, Linux system and we have syslog T so if you see here all the service that ends with D uh, will be something uh, you know called as a diamond process so there are you know various steps that are involved in creating a diamond process so here are the eight steps so the first one is uh, you need to fork and let the parent exit so that your process will become the uh, you know the orphan process and its parent will be the init uh, one process that is the first process in the linux uh, user space and then we need to create a new session okay by doing that we actually have a new uh, you know uh, uh, you know access to this process and uh, by using that we uh, we come out of uh, the session id that is created by the process when we launch it from the terminal right so we have to ignore some of the signals that can interrupt about daemon during runtime so we need to ignore um, uh, the signals or we can use uh, the signal handler to close or ignore the signals that comes from the process group or the SSID so then we need to do the fork again right so if you see uh, we have a session ID and this session ID is been you know uh, can be controlled by the TTY and we don't need our diamond process to be controlled by any of the TTY for that we do a second fork here then we need to set the permissions of the files that are created by this diamond process right so for that we need to mask our files by using umask then we have to change the root directory so if you don't change the root directory 
then uh, what happens is if uh, that 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 directory is mounted on some file system so that file system uh, cannot be unmounted because the daemon is always uh, you know uh, running in the background and they don't allow that uh, you know uh, directory to get unmounted so if you take it the root directory so you know that the root directory will be unmounted when the system shut downs right so we cannot uh, you know uh, uh, do it at runtime so we can change the root directory to slash or the root okay we have to close all the file descriptors of that process right so last thing we need to have uh, errors and uh, we need to have the information about this daemon so we are logging uh, the debug info uh, into the syslog or we can log it on a file also we can create it it somewhere and we just write it and uh, by doing this as we don't have any control from the terminal to the daemon process we can check for this file for any errors okay so let's go uh, for the code and check for all the you know uh, the steps that we have mentioned above these uh, you know uh, eight steps so let's do that so we need to include some of uh, the headers uh, for folk exit umask and there we have uh, for syslog and uh, then we have signals because we need to ignore the signals also so we need to take that also so i'm just uh, you know having some uh, macro for logging info uh, onto the syslog so the first step will be the forking so uh, we are forking the child process and then we are exiting the parent here right so our orphan process is created and the ppid will be the first process then uh, the second step as we have already discussed we have to create the ssid okay so by doing this uh, we have a new session so as we know that our executable is uh, you know run from uh, the terminal uh, initially so before creating the diamond process so uh, the session id and the process group id will be provided by the bash session okay so we don't need that for that uh, we need to create a new session id so that it can open, cannot be controlled by that then the third step uh, we are using signals and uh, we are ignoring the sick child okay and the sick hub signal okay so these two signals we are ignoring here then then the next thing is uh, you know the second fork which we have already discussed so that our the session id will not be equal to the process id so if that happens then if in some way your 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 uh, you know tty access your ss id or process so it can be you know access so our main process of a uh, you know diamond is not fulfilled so for that we need uh, you know this thing and uh, then after this uh, fork your parent id got exit again now your uh, now after this your process uh, group id will may be equal to the uh, you know sid that is a session id but your process id will be different okay so next thing is setting the file permission so i am giving 0777 for that so that is not a problem here so we just use a umask to mask uh, the file permissions uh, for the file that is created then the sixth step as we have already uh, mentioned we have to change the directory and we are putting it on a root so if the system uh, you know starts or it shut downs so it only depends on the root uh, you know uh, location and then uh, we need to close each and every FD that is been you know opened into this uh, process so for that I'm using a loop and I am using this uh, you know the maximum uh, FDs uh, this macro here to uh, you know recursively delete all the FDs that are being opened into this process right 
so we have uh, done everything now the last thing we need to have is uh, you know uh, logging our uh, errors or uh, info into our syslog so for that i am using the syslog.h here and there are a few apis that are being used so i am using the open log that is an api to open the logs into the syslog and uh, we are you know putting uh, pid and the user id into that so the this is uh, just for the pattern of the message that is being displayed into the syslog and then i'm uh, putting a while loop <coughs> okay and uh, this while loop we have uh, you know sleep for two seconds and then after it will print the log and there i have put in a counter to check whether these logs are coming properly or not it's just for that only then we close the log and our program exits so after all these uh, steps we are able to create you know the uh, daemon process and let's compile our program and we have uh, uh, gcc and uh, we just name it a daemon underscore s and uh, let's compile it it get compiled okay now the next step is uh, we need to run that thing and then we have uh, you know run and we get the parent exit id which we have uh, put it here okay so let's uh, see for the terminal okay so let's have uh, you know uh, the process so i am just having this uh, daemon underscore s this is the executable which, which we have launched and here the ssid and uh, sorry sid and uh, process group id is same but the pid is different and we don't have any controlling tty terminal so that's why it's uh, marked as uh, question mark right so the P ppid the main you know uh, parent id for this uh, this uh, daemon process is one that is the first uh, process uh, of the linux system and if we now want to see uh, the syslogs then we have uh, where log then we have syslog so you see here our uh, daemon is uh, running and uh, it's logging our details so we have given the logs the pid and the logging message and the counter so all the things are being logged here okay so this way we can have the daemon process and we can have control over to that uh, daemon process okay so so this is how we create a daemon process so if you have uh, any query just uh, put a comment into the video so that uh, we can discuss it more but uh, till then uh, goodbye and take care okay thanks